Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Live in Conversation. My name is Daphne Antoine in conversation with the lovely attorney, Daphne Chameleon. Hey, hey, Daphne. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. So Live in Conversation is just basically a show to share resources, um, to spotlight a professional, to basically share information to help our family entrepreneurs thrive. Uh, so with that being said, before we start, we're going to have uh, Attorney Chameleon uh, do a disclosure for us this evening. Sure. So I'm an attorney. Anything I say this evening is for information purposes only. It does not create an attorney-client relationship. Uh, Ren Daphne Renee is um, a fiduciary um, entrepreneur. Anything, uh, she's a financial entrepreneur, sorry. Anything that she says this evening uh, doesn't create a fiduciary duty between you and her. Uh, and all our, um, and our, that it also includes our guests. And um, just so you know, all the information we're saying this evening is for information purposes only. Back to you, Dad. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So we are in the month of March. We just relaunched. And March is Goldman History Month. And uh, as we stated earlier or last week, we want to take this opportunity to highlight Haitian female. Say heroin for me, please. I think I'm saying it incorrectly. <laughs> heroin. Heroin. Okay. Yeah. I was like, heroin. is that how you say heroin? It's, okay. Thank you. It sounds, it sounds similar to what you think it does. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is that what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, we want to uh, celebrate Haitian female pioneers past and present to encourage us, to motivate us, to in inspire us in regards to what's possible uh, for us too. So with that being said, uh, Attorney Chameleon is going to highlight a very, I guess, inspirational person uh, in Haitian uh, history, in not only history, it's present too. This is present day. Uh, so I'm going to going to solo attorney chameleon who's going to share about this um wonderful person with us so um i'm going to be talking about ursa pascal uh chulo um and please correct me uh daphne if i'm saying it inaccurately um because you know my trail is my loop as they say so um <laughs> please let me know uh she is uh, a person we'll be featuring tonight um, and I learned about her. I did not know about her. So she uh, was the um, first um, Haitian uh, woman president, right, which was huge. And it's not just that. So she was a provisional president of Haiti for 11 months in 1990 through 1991. She is the first woman in ha Haitian history to hold the office of presidency. Um, and in addition to make, breaking down that barrier, she's also the first female president of African descent in the Americas. As you know, we're sitting here in the United States of America. We still have not had a female president, but she was the first female president in the, of African descent in the Americas. That's the biggest part. Um, well, another interesting fact about her, as we're talking about Women's Month, and recently just had Women International Day, um, she uh, was an attorney. Um, she received her law degree in Haiti. Um, I believe it's Le de Droit de Gonaive in Port-au-Prince. Um, she's held various legal positions, um, and she became a judge. And she was actually um, became the first woman pres uh, the first woman justice of the Haitian Supreme Court. Uh, so she um, she became president, uh, although of, of Haiti, on March 13, uh, 1990. So. We are now March 9th. Um, we are talking about about 32 years ago. Um, and something that was truly uh, significant that I thought that she said was when she was giving her inaugural speech, uh, she said the famous words that she accepted the presidency uh, with, a, she said, I accepted this heavy task in the name of Haitian women. Um, especially, like I said, we are uh, uh, Women History Month. We just had Women International Day. Um, uh, I mean, that to me was like very powerful um, to ex become president and to understand how um, the significance of her becoming presidency, becoming a president of a, a country 
um, what impact that would have on women. Now, if um, some people may know, some people may not know, um, you know, Haiti's constantly in the news, um, and it's very, um, had, it's had a very tumultuous uh, political history, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so um, one of the biggest accomplishments um, that she did was she oversaw the very first uh, free election in Haiti, um, which occurred in December 16, 1990, and that's when Jean-Baptiste Aristide won. So that was something huge. Um, unfortunately, afterwards, he had her jails. Um, but she was in jail for one day, and then uh, apparently the U.S. stepped in, and then she was let go. Um, you know, Ms. Pascal Trulot is actually still living, uh, which is a blessing um, to all of us. Uh, that I, I don't know if she's in Haiti or if she's in the States or wherever, but that is truly like a living legend, as you would say, um, to still have her. Um, it would be an honor of, if I ever meet her in my life to to meet um, a president, you know, and then also to have a woman of woman descent. Um, so that is our spotlight, uh, Erta Pascal Chulo. So Daphne Renee, let me know if I said that right. I'm sure I said that wrong. Don't come for me, but just correct me, please. <laughs> You're on mute. You're on mute. Muted. I'm muted. <laughs> you did great. You did great. And as a matter of fact, a special guest this evening has a, I guess, a family tie with um, Pascal um, Tuyo. So she's going to be sharing that with us this evening. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> small world. Yeah, small world. Uh, so with that being said, thank you for sharing that. So uh, you mentioned not only Haitian female president, but first female president of African descent in the americas yeah so haitian has been paving the way absolutely since the beginning and we are still doing it and we will continue uh to do it so thank you thank you so much for educating us about miss uh, pascal Tuyo. so with that being said it is time for immigration news we have an attorney with us we are here to share information pertaining uh, to the immigrant community. So if you or you know someone who may need this information, please share, uh, reach out to Attorney Chameleon. That's why we're here. And if you have any question that you would like her to uh, answer live for us, for you or for us, uh, feel free to always comment or reach out to us and she can answer your questions for you live as well. Are you ready for the immigration segment, Attorney Chameleon? Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome. So uh, there's two things I will be talking about this evening, uh, very briefly. Um, the first is um, for immigration news that's going on right now, uh, TPS, which is Temporary Protected Status. It has been designated for the country of Ukraine. Um, for most people out there know that Ukraine is in war right now with Russia. Um, and I don't want to get into any politics, um, but just to say that um, the United States has designated Ukraine as a TPS country. TPS stands for te Temporary Protected Status. And basically the United States will give citizens of certain countries this temporary protected status. If their country um, has, you know, it's, sometimes it's a natural disaster, sometimes it's a war, um, it can be uh, various reasons why they would designate the country TPS. And really what that means is if a person is in the United States um, of that from that country, Ukraine, um, at the time that the TPS was granted, uh, which was actually March 1st, um, they could go and they can't go back to their country. Um, they can go ahead and fill out um, an application for this temporary protected status and be allowed to stay in the United States. Um, they can also work while they're in the United States under temporary protected status once it's been granted. Um, it has been granted for 18 months. And like I said, it's as of March 1st, 2022. If a person is not in the United States, currently it's March 9th. If they were to come here now, March 9th from Ukraine and ask for temporary protected status, they would not be eligible. They had to have already been here as of March 1st, 2022, in order to be eligible for TPS. So that's my um, one point that I want to talk about. The other point I want to talk about was asylum. Um, and asylum is a uh, 
is also a relief that people file for uh, who are being persecuted from their country. And um, there's some um, movement in Congress. Uh, there's a group of senators that wrote a letter to the president um, and they're asking that um, people who are seeking asylum, that they be appointed um, an attorney. So in the United States, you know, if you're, if someone is arrested, um, they are, um, and they don't have money for a lawyer, they are given a public defender. Uh, however, in immigration court, if someone is put in detention or they face, um, uh, they face uh, deportation, they are not given an automatic attorney. They have to seek it out. And so um, this is a big deal um, because the, I'm just going to grab some statistics real quick. Um, the people who have a lawyer, they're five times more likely to get um, relief, right? Um, than versus someone who doesn't have a lawyer. So they're five times more likely to get asylum. Um, and that's for people who are out. So if you're in a detention center and you're in um, danger of being deported and you're going to court by yourself, so people who are detained, uh, they're, um, if they have a lawyer, they're 10.5 times more likely uh, to get uh, relief than someone who doesn't have a lawyer. Um, in you know, so having an attorney is a big deal because um, asylum is, is complicated and understanding the process and um, being able to advocate for yourself. Um, a lot of people don't know the process. I mean, why would you know the process? You know, why would people know it if you're not studying asylum, right? And so, and it just can be very complicated. Um, so um, it's, it's very, very, very um, important um, to, you know, it's just really important to uh, get representation, um, you know, if you can, there's a lot of legal clinics. Um, I think a big barrier is cost, you know, so there are organizations that do represent people for free, but I understand it's, it's not easy getting it. Um, the other thing is that um, between 2001 and 2021, so over a 20 year span, um, over 1.3 million people um, went to court by themselves. And that's, you know, for uh, went to immigration court um, facing deportation proceedings by themselves. Um, remember I told you that stat statistic, you're 10 times more likely um, if you're detained you know, to get some type of relief um, uh, to be approved if you have a lawyer and then you're five times more likely if, you, if you're by yourself, if you're out and, and about and come into court. So it's a big, it makes a huge uh, difference um, if you have some type of legal representation um, and asylum, I think people are a lot of, um, it's very strict, the law, and it's, you know, you have to, you have to qualify. And, and if you're, you have to prove that you qualify. Um, but if you don't understand, you know, the process or you're unable to prove it, you're not going to be successful. And so that's when legal representation um, can be very helpful. Back to you, Renee. I keep saying Daphne, Renee. You're on mute. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's always great to have you give us the information we need pertaining to immigration laws, especially for our audience who may uh, find this information relevant to them. Uh, so as a recap, Ukraine has been assigned uh, for CPS, Temporary mm -hmm. Protected Status. And then now, so technically, um, it's not approved yet, but it's a proposal for people seeking asylum to be able to have attorney privilege. Is that what you're saying? Right. So they're trying to get money. Um, yes, money. because who pays for it? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, right. So they're trying to get money earmarked so that um, they can give some of these states some money, some funding that will allow them to help out some of these people or clinics or however. Mm -hmm. way yes. Organizations. Yeah. Right. To, to go ahead and represent these people because at the end of the day, they still have to get paid. Because exactly. the asylum, right, in the asylum, as we say, this can take a two or three year process. So it's a long time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And for those of you who may um, need assistance and who may uh, require an attorney to help you with uh, what you are going through right now, uh, Attorney Camelin is available. 
uh, for a 15 minutes only <laughs> consultation. Uh, so if you want to consult with her regarding your case or your family case, uh, she can be reached at 847 410 9022 and, and again oh go ahead i'm sorry yeah and it, it's a free consultation for the first 15 minutes and um leave a message <laughs> <laughs> please leave a message leave a, leave leave a message. message and if you have a general question uh feel free to reach out to us in yes. and messenger and then we may be able to answer this question for you you know live so take advantage right. of that also yeah. uh so with that being said, now it's part of our resource uh, segment or uh, entrepreneur resource segment. And the, the resource I'm going to be sharing this evening is connected to our guest uh, this evening. I actually saw the resource uh, from her Facebook page and um, I said, let me share it. And then also let's bring her in so she can give us some insider details about how if you are interested in um working with this company or starting a career with the department of human services then you know you have someone that you can reach out to or who can be answering some questions for us this evening to help you uh get ahead so that being said let me share those two resources for you all this evening all right you're you're spotlighting me. I'm spotlighting you. I just love you so much. That yeah. I, you you. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to those of you joining us live. This is live in conversation. I am Daphne Antoine. I am a mother, wife, entrepreneur, church member, you name it. Most likely I do it. Uh, so that being said, this segment is to share resources. If you are an entrepreneur or maybe you just uh, is a family person and you need some resources right now to help you get ahead in your journey and your career, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be sharing with you. Let me get my share screen. Currently, the Department of Human Services is going to be hosting a information information session uh and we got to the upcoming i guess employment need so it's not there okay i'm going to have our guests uh, speak more about that this evening so just so you know my uh resource this evening is to share with you all um, an event that's going to be held via Zoom on the 25th of February, of March, the 25th of March. I, I will put the, um, the posting and the comment, and I'll try to display it again since I'm not able to do it right now. But if you are interested in starting a career with the Department of Human Services, it is an information session that you can learn more about how you can do that in your journey. And again, I will be speaking with my guests this evening uh, about that. So the second thing is, if you are an entrepreneur and you are in, interested in starting a business and you do not know where to start, uh, just be sure to go to YouTube. Uh, and if you are in the Chicago area, is this being shown? Yes, it is. If you are in the Chicago area and you're not sure as to how to exactly go about starting a business, uh, having the legal paperwork done, uh, the Chicago BACP has a YouTube page that has several videos that can um, give you the information you need to get started. So do not feel intimidated. There are resources out there there are people that you can talk to. They this have classes. And those classes are usually live uh, with, with the organization. But then, obviously, if you're an entrepreneur, you do not have time, you are busy, then it's also being replayed uh, on, on YouTube as well. So these are the two resources that I wanted to share with you all tonight. 
and I do not want to take any more time from our guests this evening. Uh, so we do professional spotlight so that we can have people who have experience in the field who can help us, direct us, and let us know kind of the pathway uh, for, those of, for those of us who may be interested in the career choice. So without further ado, please welcome Mrs. Kately Acacia Lockett. She is a community activist. She is a social worker and assistant administrator, retired assistant administrator with the Human um, Department of Human Services, and she is a mom. Uh, so please, please welcome Mrs. Kately Acacia Lockett. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Lockett. How are you? Thank you for being with us. Can you hear me? Oh. I can hear anything. We can hear you, and we can hear your background too. Can you hear us? Okay, she can hear us. So maybe she should go. Um, she can come back on. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So we're having technical difficulties. Technical difficulty, <laughs> our apology. <laughs> and we'll try to see if we can we can get her back on. Oh, can you hear us, Kedley? I think she's trying to get it done. Okay, so as uh, we are trying to get back together, let's see. Hello, Mrs. Lockett. Can you hear us? She was able to hear me a second ago. Let's see if let's see if um she can just get off and get back on. She wants. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm going to call her. Um, okay. And okay. then, so I'll educate just, us about the immigration. <laughs> no, I'll say something about Akitli a little bit. Uh, um, so yeah, so um, our purpose is just to spotlight someone in the community. Uh, prefer you know, for this month being Women's History Month, we want to feature a woman. Um, all things Daphne said, Ketley, um, is a woman in the community, in the Haitian community. Um, Daphne and I's um, background is uh, Haiti. So my parents are from Haiti. Daphne uh, was born uh, and raised in Haiti. So obviously um, that we're very interested in um, just, you know, all things Haiti. Uh, but um, we're using this opportunity in this month uh, to just feature women, um, you know, all types of women um, uh, who are done outstanding things in the community, who are entrepreneurs, who are moms, who are sisters, cousins, um, you know, hard workers, just, you know, all things women. And Kitley is um, a retired um, woman, as you'll see, who um, has worked for the Department of Human Services. She's had this wonderful government job for many years. So we were um, hoping to, for her to shed some light on her experience working for Department of Human Services, as well as how to get in um, to government uh, jobs. If that's what, so if someone is interested in, um, you always hear about, you know, get yourself a good government job. Um, so this is someone who was in the inside and just finding out what her journey was like um, in there, in, in, the, in her position. And also she has retired, but she has also, um, you know, from what I don't know uh, Kelly personally, and we'll get to know her this evening, but I know that she's involved in the Haitian community in Chicago, um, as that's this is where our show is. And um, she's chosen to volunteer and, um, you know, just be a person in the community. And so we're just trying to, you know, kind of get, uh, find out why she decided to do that because um, not everybody decides to volunteer and to give back. So uh, why was that important to um, Kentley? So hopefully we can get her back on and she can hear us and then uh, we can go from there. Hello. I cannot hear you. Oh, no, we can hear you. 
Oh. <laughs> Interesting. I can't. I oh, she's on. Um, she's gonna go ahead. You can call her. So, as we are having once again <laughs> technical difficulties, um, we'll see what we can do. Where we've used this uh, platform, Streamyard, we've been uh, you know somewhat successful in it. Uh, but um, we got to explore different things or see what's up um, because, you know, as we all been working from home in this Zoom culture and just StreamYard and everything else, Microsoft Teams, et cetera, you know, we're we're all learning. It's a, um, a work in progress. So hopefully um, Ketley uh, will get back on and we can go ahead um, with, you know, the the story. Were you able to get her, Daphne? She must be talking. Our hope is to create, you know, just to continue on, our hope is to create um, 30, 35 minutes. We're kind of loose on it. Um, platform where we talk, we're able to feature more people. This month is Women's History Month. Um, in the future, we want to feature um, entre more entrepreneurs, more male and females um, doing things in the community, just people out in the Chicagoland community, but not just, um, you know, we're open to suggestions because we um, do our site, do our, um, our podcast uh, in, um, remotely. Um, we can talk to anybody anywhere in the world. So if you know of a person, um, you know, an entrepreneur or someone very active in their community, um, anybody that is mm -hmm. interested in the show, then go ahead and um, send us a yes, message. Yes, I hear you little, let mm -hmm. me put the volume up. Yeah, go ahead and send us a message and we'll, we'll go from uh, there and we'll see if we can spotlight them. And if they want to spotlight their business as well, we have no problem doing that as well. We appreciate it. Good evening. Good evening. Wait, we can't hear you, Daphne. Are you on mute? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, we, cannot I cannot hear Daphne, but I can hear uh, Daphne Chameleon. Yeah. Oh, you now you're on mute. Are you going to do Now unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Okay. No, can we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can leave. How about now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Live in Conversation. If you are still here, we appreciate you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Live in Conversation is a show that share information, resources, and highlight individuals who can shed uh, some light into the career and how um, they can inspire us and give us information about how we can uh, if we are interested, follow the footstep. So we have the lovely Mrs. Kately Acacia Lockett with us this evening, who is a retired social worker and assistant administrator with the Department of Human Services. And like me, uh, like Daphne's parents, Daphne Chameleon's parents, we have two Daphne's. We are from Haiti. So we're going to be speaking about our experience in, uh, in Haiti too. So... I'm going to have Daphne ask you the first questions. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Oh, I'm, awesome. yes. I'm honored to be in that discussion tonight. Oh, this is Women's Month. Yes. Oh. And please introduce yourself as well. Okay. My name is Kate Lee Acacia Lockett. Great. So, yeah. So, I, I wanted to ask you, um, I was giving a little um, background and I um, definitely uh, mentioned that you were from Haiti, but I wanted to know, like, what part of Haiti were you from, and when did you emigrate to the United States? Okay, I'm from Jeremy, Haiti. Yes, and I've Me been. In the <laughs> you are. That's a small world. Yes, mm -hmm. I've been in the U.S. since you know, uh, when I, since 1984. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, I was 21 years old, so I came, you know, because my brother was living here, and I have some family members. First, I live in Montreal, Canada. Oh! And I figured out it was too cold back in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> back in 1979, so yeah. I, I I realized it was too cold, and I said I'm coming to the Chicago, 
to stay with my brother, but it, it, Chicago was another, you know, coldest, you know, city. Yes. So I did not know what I was getting myself in. But I've been in the U.S. since 1979, not 84, 1979. And I was in Haiti. I was always involved, you know, with, you know, helping my community. I was a Girl Scout going camping. I was the leader of my team. I was involved with the church, you know, with the choir, with the church. And because of my mother, you know, my family is Christian. I come from a family, you know, background and Bordeaux family. That's our family name and my father, Lundy. So, and I think, you know, I was born, you know, to be just the way I am, you know, helping the community at, at large. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you had a long career with the Department of Human Services. Um, I mean, tell us how did that came about? Was it hard uh, for you to get that position or to earn that position? Um, and what was your journey like? Girl, I worked my way up. You know, when I first, <laughs> nothing is easy. When I first started, you know, first of all, you know, when you entered the country, you immigrate in the country, it's cold. Yes. Plus, you know, it's not like Haiti. You have no friends and you don't know the language. That's that's a, that's a very a big challenge. So you have to learn, you know, the, the English language. I went to Truman College and start, you know, with adult educational program. So I start learning the the, in, uh, the English. After that, you know, I continue my uh, my my studies. So I graduate from Truman College. I got my uh, associate, you know, in human services. And I went to a Northeastern University and I got my BA in psychology. Right after graduation, you know, and right after graduation, I I know I know there was a Haitian Community Association, which I really want to get involved, but I started working with the Department of Human Services back in 1984. And I start, you know, from, from a clerical position. And I started there. It was not that easy, but the process is a very easy process. You know, you have to you have to go downtown to get you know to get the test, and you get to get a grade of A, a passing grade, and they put you on a waiting list. And when they have a position, they call you, and you have to choose you know based on your and uh, uh, district area, you have to choose you know what office you want to go work to. So I work for so, uh, at so many different offices. I work at Lower North, Downtown, Wicker Park, you know, and North, Northwest on the West side. And after that, you know, I moved, you know, to, to the Northern, you know, uh, on the North side, which I was there since 89. Gradually, you know, you know, gradually, you know, I can say, you know, I have a talent, you know, I learned fast. So I become a caseworker. While I was, you know, a caseworker, I heard a caseworker behind and uh, behind me who was interviewing the Asian, Asian, you know, uh, customer, and she was telling the customer that you know, and they gave you like one hundred fifty dollars on stamp, and you think that you know is not enough. You don't have stamp in your country, mm. and that was that was very disrespectful. First of all, this is very discriminatory. You don't talk to any uh, customer like that. Everybody is entitled, even if you Haitian, if you. You know, uh, if from Ireland, if you from from any country, this is state government. You know, benefits as long as you qualify, they don't have to go dig down. You know, to your about your country, saying that you know your country don't provide you that. So whatever they gave you is that charity. You have to accept that. So I was so mad, and the same day, and I call you know, and I call Bob Preswa was the president of the Haitian American Association at that time, back in 1990, 92. And I told them that I want to volunteer to be the social worker for that agency so I can provide, you know, services, social services to, to, to the Haitian community. Not only providing the service, I also want them to educate them about their rights, their responsibilities, and the fear, you know, they have, you know, to go and apply, you know, for social, for public benefits when they are in need. And I also went to law school for a year to to learn about, you know, the community services and the tenant uh, rights and uh, rules and regulations. So that really helped me in my career, you know, to, to educate, you know, the population. We used to have like seminar every Sunday at Saint Jerome Church and health fair every Sunday after mass. 
you know, I, we used to have a seminar, healthcare to educate the community. So I start just like that. And by promoting myself, after I become a caseworker, I become a manager. And I was, you know, I, I work hard. I take pride on how I do my work. And I learn, you know, the policy. I learn, you know, the rules and the regulations. And I cannot tolerate, you know, a caseworker intimidating, you know, a customer regardless of their social ethnic or their background. So after that, I become, you know, the assistant administrator back in 19, I think it's 2007. And I had worked, you know, with the human, with the Department of Human Services for 38 years. And I pay my dues. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 this is US USA is a land of opportunity. It doesn't matter where you come from, as long as you put your mind to it, you can become whatever you can achieve anything and become whatever you want to. You can be successful. Education is key, and willingness is is number two. As long as you want to become somebody, you could do it. So I would encourage everybody, you know, and and to just don't come to the U.S., you know, as immigrant and just stay there and you don't pursue a career because there are opportunities available to everyone. Yes. Is is there any um, advice to the person out there who's looking? Because a uh, department, it was the Illinois Department of Human, Human Services. Services. Mm -hmm. So working for the state. So if they're in another state or even in the state of Illinois, what advice would you get to, because you always hear, I, I, I'll speak of myself. Yeah. I was here, you know, get get your, like work for the state, the state, the federal government, the city, it throws out all good jobs, you know? Good job, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're steady. So what advice would you give someone who's interested in working for a state, the city, the federal government, um, as far as like um, pursuing it? It's outreach. Do not be afraid, you know, to apply because you can start from you can start from a scratch one. And plus, the the government give you the opportunity to send you to school while you're doing. And we have a program called an uh, upward mobility. They pay they pay for you to go to school, so they give you time to go to school during working hours. So and uh, I this this month there is a. There's an outreach for DHS employee and uh, DHS, you know, seeking for people to work. So I put I put it on Facebook and I believe that I sent it to a uh, Daphne was telling me she just saw it and share it with people. They having the, they're having those uh, job fair. So people can go there and fill out the application. They can always go online to Department of Human Services and that gov. Uh, and uh, and put you have to put an account now you do you create an account and you create you know you fill out the applications there are multiple jobs available based on your based on your educations and your work history so you can choose whatever you know you feel like you want you know you're interested you know of, of doing and you apply you go downtown now because of the pandemic i believe that you have you have to schedule an appointment to go take the test and as long as you have an a that's the passing grade. If you got a B, you have to wait 30 days to go back. If you have an A, so you will be on the waiting list. And there is there is a, there are a lot of you know job available. So you they can call you and you choose the office you want to work, the office and the zoning that you want to work uh, uh, to. And I can encourage everybody you know to apply. It's a good job because when you retire, they have good benefits. They have you know if you work for 20 years, you got free health insurance, and you got a good pension. And I will. I can tell you when I start. You know, back in 1984, I wasn't even making a thousand dollars a month, and I retired with six figures. Wow. So I'm proud to say that you know it's a good job that give you that build your confidence and that build your future, and you can also you know that you know and have a lot of opportunities you know to send your your kid to school. You can do whatever you want to do for a government job. So you're and you're saying also that they. So there's different types of jobs. It doesn't, I mean, based on your education level. So it's not just all college educated or master's degrees. Exactly. They're, okay. they're, they're, they're also clerical required just, you know, a, a GED or, you know, a high school diploma. They also have Department of Human Services that deal with the social services, but they also have, you know, the Department of Labor that deal with uh, IRS, tax, revenue, stuff like that. They also have, you know, the nursing home. They also have the nurses, the doctors. Mm -hmm. They have multiple, you know, 
yes, you know, it's not only, you know, people think about Department of Human Services for benefit, for public benefits, but they have a lot of, you know, a, a, a department. They also have, you know, a, the Department of Corrections. You know, they have, the, the, yeah, they have Department of Corrections. They have the nursing home, you know. So it's not only, you know, the Department of Human Services for public aid, for SNAP and food stamp and medical. They have a, a variety, you know, of, you know, department that people can apply. And you said you said something um, I, I want to touch back about uh, upward mobility. So if someone's working at um, Starbucks, right, or Target or Walmart, whatever, and they apply for the uh, for the state, what is what do they do? What is upward mobility? The upward mobility is a is a uh, is a uh, program that you know the state of you know allow the employees to go back to school. Oh, uh, while you're working get, for them. Yes, while you're working for the department, you get a degree. They allow you time, you know, to go to school and they pay for your education. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. That's yeah. a that's a huge benefit. Yeah, it's it is because I use, you know, I use that uh, that program and they also give you money for childcare to help you. Because I used to take Spanish in yeah, it is true. I used to wow. uh, take Spanish from nine o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock at Northeastern. So I, my work, you know, schedule was 8.30. They, they allow you time to travel, to go to school, to to, to take your class and come back. Wow. Yes. No, yes. That, that's ooh, amazing. That is, is amazing. Because, you know, like, childcare, and then you're talking about school. So, like, if someone wanted to just go back slowly, like, you have your GD, you want to take a college class or start the program. Yes, you yes. You the support of a flow. That's mm -hmm. huge. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good, you know, a, a program. It's a very good job. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I shared the the flyer. Yes, uh, I see that. You saw it? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Awesome. Let me uh, edit again. Okay. So for those of you who may be interested on uh, on Friday, March 25th, mm -hmm. it's going to be a I guess information session uh, via Zoom. This is the link. Um, and I'll also edit in the comments so that you all can just click on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can go to illinois.job2web.com oh. to get more information. It is a form that uh, that asks you. It's like a Google form. It just basically asks you your personal information, kind of some of your history, and you can attach your resume. Um so that I guess when you when you actually be part of the live, you never know. Maybe maybe they'll talk to you. I'm not sure. But then it it is a Google form that you can fill out and send your information as a pre step. All right. So let's get back to the interview. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's great information indeed. It is. It's very. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Daphne. No, I was gonna ask. Um, I, so you talked about um, being involved in the community, even in uh, Haiti, being in the Girl Scouts. Um, I recently, my mom was talking about she did Girl Scouts, um, which was amazing to me because um, as a kid, I never did Girl Scouts, but my kids are. So I thought that was um, interesting and full circle because she never talked about that before. And I was like, there's Girl Scouts. That's my ignorance. There's Girl Scouts in Haiti? Like yes, <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. That was my ignorance, right? And so, um, um, so you've always been involved in in the community. So I wanted to ask you, um, uh, even like you said, you're retired. I uh, know you're still involved. Uh, yes. Why? Do you, why? What What drives you to to want to help your people or people in general? I think is is a self rewarding. I think it's a great you know feeling you know to be able to to help to assist others, especially if God give you you know the opportunity and the knowledge you know to educate others. Why would not you know share it you know? And we, in our community, we have a lot of people in need. We have a lot of elderly you know uh, 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 people. So what we've been doing, me and other, uh, we have other, uh, another uh, colleague of mine, Miss Mallory, and we've been applying, you know, for those seniors to get, you know, in public housing. We probably have more than 100, you know, seniors at that house on Emerson, you know, in, in Evanston that we apply for them. 
and you also you know help them with the home care services after we place them in a, in an apartment so we call the department of aging and catholic charities and we do the interview for them so they can find you know somebody you know and with the agency we work with an agency and universal agency you know and we send you know some of the uh, body able city, you know people in the community to go to training to learn you know the home care you know and home care rules and the techniques so they can help you know those senior citizens of course there is not a free program the the government paid pay for the program and the agency you know get the funding you know to to help and you know the the workers you know get pay to the agency so each you know citizen you know senior citizen that we place in the house we make sure that they have a homemaker based on their you know physical capability and ability that they determine you know with their insurance how many hours per week they can provide that services to that person so we've been doing that we also we also help you know the and our community you know people people in the community to apply you know for for public assistance some of them don't know how to read some of them you know are, are scared you know to put the wrong thing in the applications we help them out even that i'm retired i'm still helping them you know you know with their applications and they can mail it out you know we always we always there you know to guide them and to help them out because every ethnic group in the us has a community agency that they can go to or they can relate to to help them out and they feel confident that you know and somebody who knows you know the the system can help them out now we really don't have that much you know assistance because we have one Haitian American community association that was closed we only have the Haitian congress we don't have that that resources you know to to do that but through the Haitian congress we still help them out we do outreach we meet with them we go see them if we have to go meet them at home if we have to call them do you know conference call with those you know uh, seniors we do that being retired doesn't mean that you know i'm retired from my community i'm retired from work because i work i think i pay my dues i work almost for 40 years and i think it's time for me to enjoy life but i also want the community at large to know that you know i'm still available to help them whatever they need you know they can call and I have people calling me for the people. We don't have to know the people. We don't call them because we like the person. We call them because our people are in need of the services. And the services are available to them. And we want them to know that, you know, there is no fear, no fear, you know, for them to so-and-so can get it. They also can get it too, as long as they qualify. Wow, that's so, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can yes, I, I can hear you. Yes, okay. thank you for sharing that. Uh, so you briefly mentioned that you part of the Haitian Congress. Okay, yes. I know you are the currently the treasurer, correct? Yes, I'm the treasurer, and I was oh. the vice vice chair, you know, for for the Haitian American Community Association for two terms mm -hmm. when Lin Tusen was the president. Mm -hmm. And I also know that right now there's the coalition of Haitian organization in the Chicago yes. Lane area. Yes. So maybe briefly talk to us about uh, kind of your walls there, your wall with the Haitian Congress and what um, you hope to continue to accomplish in the community. We still, we st with the Haitian Congress, even if I'm the treasurer, but we, we still do the uh, our community uh, uh, services. And like we have those people who come from Chile from Chile, so and we 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 visit them at home. We help them, you know. And Daphne can tell you that, you know, because she's been a part of that process. We help them, you know, and with the immigration process, you know. And we I also help them, you know, uh, uh, obtain, you know, the benefits like you know, medical card. They cannot get food stamp yet because their status has not been established as immigrant or asylum or refugee. So we have to wait, you know, for that to you know to happen. But you know, we've been helping them. Also, and uh, we had some fund some funding that you know I think the Asian Congress was you know did receive. So we, you know, we, uh, I think the city of Evanston give them some some uh, money in the car. So uh, the Asian Congress president, you know, was in, was taking care of that, you know, visiting people and give them, you know, their, their, their money card. 
So we've been we've been uh, busy, even that you know, with the pandemic, we're not we're not we're not performing the way you, we used to perform, but we're still doing you know, we're still doing with the coalition, we're still doing you know a conference call, you know, Zoom meeting. So to make sure that you know we know exactly where we are, so they don't forget about there is an association you know in place to help you know the community. We're still doing what we have to do. And the, co the coalition, you know, during the pandemic is a great thing. It's like we put all those organizations together. We're working together, you know, in, in, in an effort, you know, to you know to establish something for our community. And as a matter of fact, we try to see if we can open, you know, back, you know, the Haitian American Association so we can, we can, you know, bring more people. We can have a place so you know, they can come and visit and they can come and get the services. That's awesome. Anything you want to add, Daphne? No. A million. <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, yeah. The Haitian cold, um, the Haitian Congress has been instrumental in helping um, the Haitian families in Chicago, um, especially those people who were at the Del Rio border, who came mm -hmm. from um, Chile, who were trying to seek asylum in the United States, and they've been dispersed all throughout the United States and. Chicago is one of those places, and Haitian Congress has been truly, truly uh, instrumental in in helping them, and be also um, in being a part of the Haitian um, coalition. So, uh, keep up the great work. You know, um, yeah, you're very inspiring uh, to you know not just all, help people your whole life, but to also be retired and to continue your work. Um, that's it's very, very inspiring. That's good. You know, we ne we will never stop. Because as long as God gives us, you know, the the, you know, the strength and the courage, you know, you know, we to move forward, we will always be available for our community. And I want to mention is that on the north side, we're talking about the community, Haitian community at large, right. we're talking about the south side, the suburb, you know, the you know the north side. So all around. Yes. So we don't so, want people. Um, we don't want people to just be scared. I, I'm, I don't live on the north side. You know, it's the north side thing. No, is is the community, the Haitian community at large, are welcome. Thank you for clarifying that. So earlier when we started, Attorney Chameleon educated us on uh, uh, Haitian provisional president Erta Pascal Tuyo. Yes. It's my conversation with you this afternoon. Uh, this is your fun fact. There yes. is uh, family ties between you and President Erta Pascal Tuyo. Yes. Would you care to share that with us? Yes. Uh, er Erta Pascal Tuyo married my uh, mother-in-law brother. So he and uh, my ex-husband, Michelle Acacia, you know, the, uh, that was the, uh, Mich Erta husband was his uncle. So as a matter of as a matter of fact, you know, I you know I lost that husband within you know, 1990 when Elta beca became you know the first Haitian president, uh, woman president, and Michelle was living in Chicago, and he said, you know, and I have to go back to Haiti. I have to go back to Haiti. So he left you know, to Haiti since then, since 1990. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you know he was so involved. You know he he became he became you know the uh, the president the president presidential counselor at that time until yeah. you know you know for that to knew that all long you know for all long you know she was president yes she's right. a part of our family yes because my 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 mother-in-law is a uh, uh, is tuyo was born tuyo wow yes so wow. we family fun <laughs> fact it's a small word and i had the opportunity you know before because i went to uh to 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 haiti when my daughter was born, so we were to a house. At that time, she was not president yet. She was the judge, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But she's so, a very, very, very famous woman. Yes. Very, so, gen uh, very genuine, yes. For a supreme so uh, do you mind if we act, is she in Chicago? I'm not Chicago, in the U.S. now, in Haiti? In yeah, she's in the U.S. She's in the U.S. with her daughter, yes. Okay. Wow. When he has one daughter. Can we yeah, get an interview now? <laughs> yeah, she's in the US. She goes, oh, no. <laughs> People say she's in Chicago on the south side. It's not true. <laughs> but she is in the US. I think we would know if she was here. Yeah, we would know. We would know. Yeah, she's not. She's funny. not. There was a time she was in Detroit. 
Detroit. Okay, yeah. not too far. Not too yeah, far. Not too far, but she's not in Chicago. Okay. Well, it is 8.57. This has been a great conversation. Uh, we thank you for coming live to share your wisdom with us, your experience with us, and encouraging those of us who may be considering a career uh, mm -hmm. in your profession. So any last maybe recommendation, any last advice that you may have uh, for someone who may say, oh, I actually like what this lady was doing and I would love to uh, be part of that um, profession. The the best advice I always give to people is just, you know, be fair, be, uh, be respectful and treat people, you know, with respect and treat people the way you want to be treated. Before you say anything, you can't regret think twice because at my job, I become just the, I can tell you, it's like the angel. I change the place because of my attitude. Mm -hmm. They said attitude, attitude is, is, is just like a tire. So it's like a flat tire. If, if, if you, if it's, if it's flat, you know, it takes time to, 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 to restore it. So attitude, you know, can lead you to success and respect is the key. You awesome. remember we have to treat people with respect and the way you talk to people, the way you want to be treated. That's all I can say. And you have to be sincere and you have to show compassion to people. And That's God awesome. and God will guide us to the right path. That is awesome. Thank you kindly for sharing that. Anything you would like to add, Tony Chameleon? No, just that... Um, I'm picking up all these gems of wisdom. <laughs> so, no, and I appreciate you um, being on our show this evening and, and educating us. Thank you. Thank you. That was my honor. Awesome. And um, also, if you, I also added uh, the Haitian Congress website in the comment. And so uh -huh. if you like to connect with uh, Mrs. Acacia Lockett via the Haitian Congress website, um, it's HaitianCongress.org. Uh, it's all. also in the comment and then she's on facebook as well so i'm sure if you want to reach out to her she wouldn't mind and um scrolling on the bottom is a 20 chameleon contact information 847 410 and her website is chameleonlaw.com and then so if you are someone uh, who is in need of her services or you know someone who may need her services mm -hmm. feel free to reach out as you can see she is very generous with her wisdom uh, she knows what she's doing, <laughs> and uh, why not take advantage of her expertise? That's it for this evening. Thank you for sharing live, being live with us in conversation. Remember to share it because you never know who you may bless um, mm -hmm. by uh, sharing this conversation with them and how you can encourage them and how you can share resources with them that they may not uh, know mm -hmm. about. I did not know about the upward mobility, so <laughs> it's a great resource. Uh, so definitely share this conversation, share this life, uh, speak to people, like you said, be respectful and learn from people who can mm -hmm. show you the way, because yeah. at the end of the day, us as Haitian, we want to do for us. Okay. We are not looking for charity. As long as we have yeah. the pathway, we will mm -hmm. take advantage of it so we can be self-sufficient. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it for this evening. For well, next week, where well, we will teach you about or we will inform you about another female Haitian heroine mm -hmm. uh, and spotlighting another professional and entrepreneur at that time. So have a good evening, you all. Thank you thank again. You, thank you again for having me. Thank you. Good thank night. You for Bye. Being good, night. good night. Good night. Oh, good night.